Welcome to the Mindset Mile podcast, the show that'll leave you empowered to take action towards becoming the turned up version of your already awesome self. I'm your host, Aisha Zaza, and I'm so glad you're here. Let's go. Hey fam, welcome back to the show. This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Upswing Fitness. And today I want to talk to you about 2023. And I know it's October, but it's also going to be here like before you know it. I don't know where September went, but that was easily the fastest year that went by for me uh, in 2022. So I just want to start talking about the new year now, because I used to be a big like New Year's Eve resolutions person. And I think like many, I found myself very upset and dis- and frustrated at the fact that I rarely kept those promises to myself. But I felt like it was for the sake of the new year beginning, I really needed to take advantage of the fresh start. And I understand that. Like, I understand that the beginning of a new year, this effect motivates aspirational behaviors. And I think if it does make you feel optimistic about the future or any type of change that you want to make, then it is worth taking advantage of that feeling. But I want to do something different this year where it's not just make a plan to make a plan. I really want to make a real plan that's going to set you up for success. So, um, with this kind of like love hate relationship that I have with new year's Eve resolutions, I feel like that makes me sort of like a, I'm not really a type a person. I'm more of a B and a half person. (laughs) And I mean that in the way that I feel like there is no better time than right now to start making change. But for this fresh start pinnacle that we know as New Year's Eve, um, I want to practice starting to prepare mentally and semantically now so that you're not scrambling in December when you are caught up in the busiest month of the year, you know, with holiday parties and Christmas shopping and all of the things. December is always like a throwaway month, I feel like for a lot of people. So to avoid that disappointment by making the same half-hearted attempts, I want to avoid starting on defense. So what can we do now to prepare us for next year? So I want to give you a few tips that I really want you to consider and start thinking of proactively. Okay. So set a smart goal. And SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound SMART goal. So I I did an entire episode on SMART goals. And if you haven't listened to it after this, I want you to go back to episode 51 and play that episode and really get familiar with why a SMART goal is such a more effective way of making goals than just making goals to make them. Because vague goals produce vague results. And so we want to get really specific. Like what are some things that you really want to change in your life that you want to start next year for the sake of New Year's resolutions, right? Um, And you can start those things now and you can consider all that we're going to talk about in this episode and implement that now. But this is really to get your, your wheels spinning. So you are proactively setting yourself up for 2023 and that fresh start January 1st. So the second tip is think about what methods have not worked in the past. So really spend some time being honest with yourself. What are resolutions or goals that you repeatedly make to yourself, whether that is at the first of the year or in any other time in your life, really? And what are some ways that you can look at that have not worked in getting yourself from point A to point B? So I want to call out just a really 
common, obvious goal. This might not apply to you, but just for the sake of having an example, we're going to talk about weight loss. I know a lot of people really want to change their body composition and their lifestyle. And that often starts with this main goal being weight loss. So if you set this as your goal every year and you're like, okay, this is the year I'm going to drop those 20 pounds or whatever it is. What, first of all, what you need to stop doing is thinking that the difference is going to be in your willpower. The difference is not in your willpower or your desire to want to change. It's going to be to effectively set up a plan that keeps you consistent. So think about this. If you have gotten, let's say, a 24-hour type fitness yearly membership, it's relatively low cost. It allows you access to a gym anytime, free weights, machines, um, maybe, and, and these are great options, by the way. But if this is something that you've repeatedly done and never take advantage of, then guess what? This is probably not the gym setting that is going to keep you in the gym consistently working towards your goals. So it's time to maybe start exploring some different group classes, a studio in your town. Maybe you need to find an accountability partner. So really like take an inventory of things that you have told yourself you want to do multiple times. What are the ways in which you set yourself up to get there that didn't work? And you think, just doing it this next time with more willpower is going to change that because it's likely not going to do that. So start thinking about what other routes you can take now. I'd like to invite you to check out my sponsor, Get the Tea. They have an amazing product called Life Change Tea. Why is it life-changing, you might ask? It's because they have formulated a tea containing 12 herbs that combined are so effective for cleaning out your gut. I drink it every day and it helps keep me feeling good. It's time to invest in your health, right? Why wait? It's made right here in the US. It's organic and non-GMO. It works as a gentle daily cleanse for your body and digestive system. You just brew, steep, refrigerate, and drink. It's so refreshing. Go to getthetea.com and enter code ZAZA27 to get $8 off your tea today. That's getthetea.com and enter code ZAZA27. So what systems can you have in place to set yourself up for success? Research like this can take a little bit of time and to really get your wheels spinning about how to set yourself up. So if your goal is, let's say, to learn to count macros, start asking around and researching macro coaches. Now, whether that is on Instagram, you can put up a poll on your stories asking if anyone has ever worked with a macros coach. You can search under a hashtag macros coach. Um, you can look online for if, if it, you feel partial to having someone near you that you can do in-person check-ins with. Maybe you just Google macro coaches near me. Really start to look at what this is going to look like for you once you are in motion with your plan. So spend some time making a Pinterest board, for, for example, of maybe it's paleo-friendly meals or macro-friendly meals. So have a place that you can go to when you have the time to prepare for your, for your setup and your goal where you don't need to think about the legwork. Half of the, I think, time in preparing for a goal is in the legwork, which is why I want to start doing this now. So when you do have like a, a pocket of time, let's say 30 minutes or an hour in the middle of your day before you pick your kids up from school where you're like, okay, it's time for me to meal prep. You don't have to think about, okay, well, now what do I want to meal prep? You already have a place where those things are stored and ready for you to just boom, get going and get set up. So maybe this will also look like picking two recipes to make in batch every week and writing out the list of groceries that you'll need for the first 12 weeks of the year. Do you see how doing this now is going to take the burden off of the time it's going to take to do this when the time has arrived that, okay, it's January 1st, it's go time. 
that's not the time to start <laughs> learning new systems. You really want to set this up in place now. So I'm hoping these are going to give you some good examples as to ways that you can do this within the last couple months of 2022. So I think personally being prepared and having a plan is most effective. So that's why I think, you know, finding, starting with a Pinterest board or an Instagram board batch or, you know, save a bunch of recipes, write out two recipes per week for 12 weeks and then write out your grocery list that you're going to need for those weeks. That way you are prepared. You are literally just in, in activation mode. It's easy for you to get into a flow, right? So maybe you have business goals. Um, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit and talk to people that might want to up level in their business. Maybe what you need to start doing now is research entrepreneurial groups or classes that you can take at a city college. Um, to hone in your skills, or maybe you need to source a new manufacturer, or you need to start looking for a virtual assistant, or even other forms of help that can free up your time so that you can put your time and energy into your wheelhouse. So those other forms of help could be setting up a house cleaner once a month. Maybe that is, um, you know, a few hours of childcare a few times a week. Start looking for those things now so you are playing offense instead of playing defense in the new year. Okay, my next tip is you want to set up ways to measure your progress. So part of a SMART goal, which I mentioned earlier, is being able to measure your progress. And this is going to be important because I think that people will are more likely to stick to their goals when they have a form of accountability. So if you have some health goals, what I want you to start thinking about now is maybe setting up blood work. A lot of people overlook the power of understanding how their body works on the most functional level. So blood work is going to tell you a lot about your um, vitamins and minerals and kind of lead you to the root of why you might not be functioning optimally, whether you have low energy or low libido, or I mean, there's a myriad of things that blood work is going to tell you. So maybe you want to set that up now and then set up a follow-up appointment in the three to six months after that. That way you have a starting point and then you're going to get help from a practitioner or someone that's helping you with this blood work to advise what changes you need to make in your diet or your supplements to help, you know, get these levels back up to par. And then you want to test that again in three to six months to see that what you've put in place is actually working. So maybe you want to change your body composition. So a great thing to consider doing in the new year is a DEXA scan. So a DEXA scan is traditionally a bone density test, but it also is going to tell you about muscle mass on your body. It's going to tell you your fat percentage and where exactly those things are on your body. So there is going to be no guessing if the effort you're putting in to the gym or your new workout, or I'm sorry, your new meal plan is working because data is information that doesn't lie. When you are looking at numbers, that doesn't lie because oftentimes we look at our bodies thinking not much has changed, but when we see ourselves every day, that's really hard to measure. So you want to make sure that you are, have measurable results when it comes to changing your body composition. And I think one of the best ways to do that is by doing a DEXA scan. So that's also something that you can set up a follow-up three to six months later to see real progress and not get discouraged that you think that you're just not progressing fast enough. Another really simple thing that you can do is take before photos. I think progress photos are so telling because again, when we see ourselves every day, you take for granted like, or you can't even see the changes really that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not until you look at a side-by-side -side where you're like, wow, like I've been beating myself up thinking that like, I haven't really been making change, but look at these photos. They are not lying. So take before photos. Um, if your goal, uh, I know a lot of people want to read more. So if your goal is to read one book a month, then maybe you need to get as specific as 
lining up the books that you want to read. So pick 12 books that you're going to read in the new year and taking the total number of pages, divide by 30, and then boom, you've got your blueprint as to how much you need to read every day that month. That's measurable. You you now know that if you missed two days, okay, I need to double up on the amount of pages that I read or listen to to catch up. And that is how you stay on track with your goals. So staying on track with your goals is part of what helps inspire motivation and build trust in yourself. So make sure that you are setting up ways to measure your progress next year instead of throwing spaghetti at the wall. And then lastly, what you need to start working on now is changing your mindset around how you view goals. So we make New Year's resolutions And then for some reason, we get discouraged three quarters of the way through January when we are not like seeing progress. And I'm like, you know, it's funny. It's called a, it's not called a new month's resolution. It's called a new year's resolution. So it can, and you can take up to the whole year to accomplish it. So this is going to take a different mindset than just this immediate results driven brain that has gotten you basically quickly just to discouragement. Cause let's face it, when we aren't seeing results, we get discouraged and then we end up doing less of the work, which in turn results usually in guaranteeing us to not getting to whatever our goal was. So this is going to really require you to stop the all or nothing mindset. Prepare yourself mentally that life is going to happen and that you might not perform a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. And that is okay. It doesn't mean that you're setting yourself back. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. It doesn't mean that someone else is better at achieving their goals than you build in. I think building in room for error and miscellaneous things to come up is honestly so much smarter than thinking that you can just cold turkey, you know, do something for 60 or 75 days straight that you've never done before. You guys, that type of all or nothing mentality is what has taken you out of the game. I promise you. So really change your mindset. You will have to choose to stay committed often This is not something that you just like turn a light switch on because it's the first of January or Monday. And all of a sudden you have a new set of like brain pathways that lead you to these new habits. No, this is something that builds over time. And sometimes that means you have to choose your goal over and over and over again, whether that's weekly, daily, sometimes that's multiple times a day. You have to remind yourself No, this is what I want to do. And this is what I need to do to stay on track. So don't beat yourself up for having, you know, thoughts that lead you down, down other paths of discouragement or make you feel like you're too busy to keep up with what you set out to do. That's, that's a lie you're telling yourself. You need to just choose in those moments every single time. This is what I want to do for myself and it is worth doing. Okay. So I am so excited about the new year, even though it is a couple months out. I hope that you feel prepared and it's gotten your wheels spinning on ways that you can really make 2023 the best year yet. I do believe that our best days are ahead of us. And I believe that especially for you. So thank you so much. If this episode spoke to you, please tag me on social media, hashtag mindset mile, send it to someone who can also benefit from this. And I cannot wait to see you next week, fam. Thank you so much for spending your Monday with me. We'll chat soon. And until then, make it a great day.